Today, vote to require cable barriers in the medians along some stretches of Oregon freeways. Portland City Commissioner Amanda Fritz has really been pushing for Senate Bill 921, especially since her husband died in a crash on I-5 near Salem last fall. Our Tim Becker spoke with her about the proposed law, and he joins us now with more. Tim? Yes, Senate Bill 921 is also called the Fritz Fairchild Act in memory of Steve Fritz and Carrie Fairchild, both killed in that crossover accident last September. As you can imagine, Amanda Fritz is elated now that legislation is just a signature away from becoming law. Commissioner Fritz, we're so glad you could be here with us today. Thank you for your courage and you moving this bill forward with us. Senate Bill 921, having received a constitutional majority, is declared passed. The vote was overwhelming, 54 to 4 in favor of passing the bill that would give ODOT six years to finish building barriers along about 100 miles of Oregon highways. Portland City Commissioner Amanda Fritz was in Salem to savor the moment. It was just great to see the support on the floor, and I was very glad that the bill passed. She would have celebrated 33 years of marriage to Steve Fritz last Friday. He was killed near Salem last September on his way to work, along with passenger Carrie Fairchild, when a black pickup crossed the I-5 median and crashed head-on into Fritz's zebra-striped Nissan Sentra. People have been very kind to me, and it's helped people uh, remember that politicians are people too, and that we have families and people that we love, people who we love that die. ODOT has since installed cable barriers where her husband was killed. Last month, they saved the life of 17-year-old Kaiser student Chris Jenkins. But for the new median barrier, Chris would have almost likely slid into oncoming traffic. He wrote Commissioner Fritz to express his gratitude that he's still here with us today. Oh, I cried like a baby. I was just so grateful that he took the time. Cable barriers don't always work, though. This truck rolled over the barriers into oncoming traffic this weekend near Salem. And larger vehicles like trucks won't be held back by them either. This map shows in black where barriers already exist. The purple shows high priority areas that ODOT is targeting for installation at a cost of $20 million. Money that'll start being spent if and when the governor signs the bill with Steve Fritz's name attached into law. I'm sure he would be glad to know that other Portlanders and other Oregonians are going to be safer because of this bill. Now, if this bill becomes law, it's going to apply to more than just interstates. ODOT has extended its policy uh, so that this bill would apply to other uh, divided highways like U.S. 26, 217, and then, of course, 97 yeah. through Central Oregon. So we're going to follow this bill and let everybody know when it does get to the governor's and, office. And something good may be coming out of a tragedy like this, like Amanda Fritz was saying. But you're saying this isn't foolproof, but it is no. probably one of the best preventative measures that we have. Yeah, and people talk about concrete barriers. Wouldn't those be stronger and maybe hold back a truck? The answer to that is concrete barriers can actually cause more accidents and people hit those hard and bounce back into their own lane. And the median is actually sort of a nice buffer zone. Yeah. Mm. All right, Tim, yeah. thank you. Thanks.